Okay, let's talk about solving total resistance when all we have available is our resistance values. And we're looking at our circuit with the 100 ohm, 47 ohm in series, and that branch is in parallel with R3 and R4, which is a 10 ohm and a 220. So we're going to do a circuit analysis on this once we apply a voltage, but our first step is going to have to be to solve for total resistance. So we put in our known values first. So here's our known resistances. Now because these two are in series and these two are in series, we can just add them together and count them as one resistor. So what I've done here is shown R1 plus R2 to give us a virtual 147 ohm. We have to do this because those two were in series. Same thing with R3 and R4. 220 plus 10 is 230 ohms. Now we can use these formulas for this parallel circuit. And this can be used for any number of resistors. That's why I stick with this one formula, because I can just keep adding R1 plus R2 plus 1 over R3, etc. So 1 over R1, in this case, it would be this first resistor here, plus 1 over R2, this virtual resistor, and then you take 1 over that total. So it's 1 divided by 147 plus 1 divided by 230. If you were to do that formula, you would come out with 0 .011. Well, you have to take the reciprocal of that answer. Remember, it's 1 over that total. So if we take the reciprocal of 0 .011, in other words, 1 divided by this number, now we have an answer of 89.68. So that is our total resistance of this circuit using that method. Well, now we are going to apply our 5 volts. Well, the rule of parallel circuits is the voltage is the same. So the voltage would be the same across this virtual load, these two added together, and this one. So I can take my 5 volts applied, I put it in as a known value, E over R equals I from our Ohm's Law wheel, and we come up with this answer. And then we can take I times E to come up with our total power. So we've just solved for our totals. Okay? Now, because voltage is the same in parallel, we can take 5 over our virtual 147 to figure out the total current in just this branch. Remember, this branch has two loads in it, but they're in series. So the total resistance is considered when, cons when figuring out the current in that branch. If we had four resistors, we'd have to add all four together, but we only have two. So that, that resistance, 5 divided by that resistance, gives us 0.34 amps in this branch. We do the same thing, 5 divided by 230, because voltage is the same in parallel, and we have our 0.021 amps. This is the same as saying 34 milliamps and 21 milliamps. If we add these together, 34 milliamps plus 21, it equals 55 milliamps or 0 0.055 amps. So it works out. It's the same as E over R equals I. We get the same answer. So we know we've calculated our branch currents correctly. So if this branch for R1 and R2 is 34 milliamps, then I can put in 0 0.034 for both I1 and I2. Current's the same in a series circuit. Same thing with I3 and R4. The current is the same in both of those loads, 21 milliamps, 0 0.021 amps. Now because I have known values in two columns, I can go ahead and solve for the unknown. I started with E, because I want to know my voltage drops across each load. So I 
times R equals Z. 0 0.034 times 100 is 3.4 volts. And you would do that according to the Ohm's Law wheel all the way across. Now we can take I times E pi, remember P equals I times E, to solve for the wattages in each load. Now we can see by using quarter watt resistors, which is 0.25 watts, that we're not exceeding the wattages in any of these loads. If we were, that load would become warm or hot when we applied our, our 5 volts. So 5 volts is a safe voltage to do this. Next we're going to talk about troubleshooting because we want to know by taking voltage readings if everything's working okay. So I've placed in our voltage drops according to our calculations. So if we stuck our voltmeter right across R4, we would see 4.77 volts roughly across that load.